Hi and welcome back. I'm Judy and I'm Michael. Today we're going to learn pegominal, or in German, Heckmeck am Bratwurmek, which is a lot more fun to say. Wow, it sure is. So in this game, we're going to barbecue some worms. Wait, does that make sense? Well, the designer of this game dresses like this for award ceremonies, so that may explain a few things. I think so. Anyways. We've added symbols like this, where we thought it might be a good idea for you to take a little bit of extra time、mm-hmm. as you're playing along. But as you're playing, if you ever need a little bit of extra time, you can always just hit that pause button at any time. Yes, and don't forget, this is just a practice game, so it's very important to just have fun. All right, let's get to it. Pegamino is a dice game where you're trying to collect as many worms as possible. You collect worms by taking tiles which values equal the total on dice you have rolled. The player with the most worms at the end of the game will be the winner of Pegamino. Okay, let's set it up. Lay out the tiles in a row from twenty-one to thirty-six. You can leave the eleven and thirteen in the box. Then, take out the eight white dice and leave all other bits in the box. We won't be using them in this game. To take a tile, like this one for example, the total number on all dice at the end of your turn must add up to the number on that tile. Note that worms equal a five. Remember. Your score at the end of the game is the worms on your tiles, not the numbers. Okay, let's do a few turns to see how it all works. The person at the table whose name is last in the alphabet grabs all the white dice and carefully rolls all of them at once. Now. Separate them into groups by numbers or worms, and pick one of these groups to keep. For example, all the fours, or maybe all the worms. You can never break up a group, though. If there are three fours, you cannot just take one or two. You must take all of them. This goes for the worms as well, which again, remember, are worth five each. Set the dice you have chosen off to the side. Now take the remaining dice and roll again. Do the same thing as your first roll by sorting them by numbers or worms. Take one more set of dice and put them off to the side, but they must be different from the ones you took first. So if you took fours before, you cannot take fours again. Each time you take a set of dice, add up the total of the dice you have set aside. If it's twenty-one or higher, if you want, you can choose to take the tile that matches that total. However, even though the worms are worth five each, they serve another purpose. You cannot take a tile unless you have at least one worm set aside. Now, if you are able to take a tile and choose to, that is the end of your turn. If you didn't take a tile, keep rolling. But wait, a word of warning: if you roll the dice and can't keep any of them because you have already set those numbers aside, you have busted. Which means your turn is over and you cannot choose a tile from the row in the middle. And it is the next person's turn. So roll again at your peril. 
Keep rolling until you have either taken the tile from the display or busted. Remember, you need at least one worm set aside to take a tile. If you ever roll a number that's already been taken, you may choose to take the next lowest tile. Now pass the dice to the player on your left who takes their turn. Keep rolling like the player before you. Keep in set of dice until you choose to take a tile or you bust. Keep playing until everyone has had one turn. Then we'll go through a few more rules. Some of you will have a tile in front of you and some of you won't. But don't worry, there is lots of time to get them. On later turns, if you're awesome enough to get a second tile, it goes on top of your first tile like this. For those of you with tiles in front of you, there is an added risk. From now on, if you bust and you have tiles, you must put the tile on top of your pile back in the row. Then flip over the highest number available. That tile is no longer in play. Remember, only do this if you have a tile in front of you. If you don't, there's no risk, so go all out. One other point, you don't have to take a tile on your turn. You can always just stop after you've taken some dice if you don't want to risk busting or losing a tile. Great, play one more round with the new rules until everyone's had another turn. Right. Time for the last rule. Remember to stack your tiles on top of each other when you collect them. The first tile you got on the bottom and the most recent one on the top. From now on, if someone ever rolls the exact number of anyone's top tile, like this, they can steal it instead of taking a tile from the row. It then goes on top of their pile. To be clear, they cannot take any of the tiles that are hidden underneath. Only the one on top. If you only have one tile, that is your top tile. Keep taking turns until all the tiles have been taken or flipped over like this. At which point the game ends. Count up your worms and the player with the most worms wins. You are now ready to play. But if you still aren't sure, keep playing the video and we'll do a quick one minute summary of the important rules. When you pick a number, you have to keep all the dice of that number. You cannot take a number you have already chosen. Stack your tiles on top of each other with the newest at the top. If you bust and have a tile or tiles in front of you, you put your top one back in the row and flip over the highest tile. When you take a tile, if it's not in the row, take the next lowest tile. And finally, if you roll a number on the top of someone else's pile, you can steal it. All right, so that is Pick Amino. I hope you have fun. Now, go ahead and play another game.